Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please silence all electronic devices and do not display any badges. Attention to orders. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, July 9, 1918, has awarded the Distinguished Service Medal to Major General Michelle H. Breedenkamp, United States Army Intelligence and Security Command, for exceptionally victorious service to the government and duty of great responsibility from 25 June 2021 to 14 December 2023 as the Commanding General of the United States Army Intelligence and Security Command. Her untiring support 
of personnel and her daily commitment to selflessly serve the soldiers, civilians, contractors, and families of the United States Army Intelligence and Security Command with the highest honor and distinction set the example for others to follow. Major General Brinkham sustained superior performance consistently and epitomized the Army's value of loyalty, duty, respect, service, honor, integrity, and courage. Her leadership and commitment to this command reflect the best of the United States Army. Major General Breeding Camp's selfless service and distinguished performance of duty reflect great credit upon her, the United States Army Intelligence and Security Command, and the United States Army. Signed, Christine E. Wormoth, Secretary of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the headquarters of the United States Army Intelligence and Security Command Change of Command Ceremony. The host and reviewing officer for today's ceremony is Lieutenant General Laura A. Potter, the headquarters Department of the Army Deputy Chief of Staff, G2. The outgoing commander is Major General Michelle H. Bradenkamp. The incoming commander is Major General Timothy D. Brown. We welcome the following guests many of whom have devoted their lives to military, federal, and civilian service to our nation. They are here with us today to witness the transfer of command and leadership from General Bradenkamp to General Brown. General Paul Nakasone, Director, National Security Agency, Chief Central Security Service, and Commander, United States Cyber Command. Mr. Charles A. Alsop, Senior Executive Service Retired, National Security, security Agency. Lieutenant General Dimitri Henry, Director for Intelligence, Joint Staff, J2. Lieutenant General Jeffrey Cruz, Director's Advisor for Military Affairs at the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Lieutenant General Retired Mary Legere, former Deputy Chief of Staff, G2, and former INSCOM CG. Lieutenant General Robert, Retired Robert Noonan, former Deputy Chief of Staff, G2, and former INSCOM G CG. Mr. Peter Bechtel, Assistant Deputy Chief of Staff, G357. Mr. Gregory Christ, Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security. Mr. Terry Mitchell, former Principal Cyber Advisor to the Secretary of the Army. Major General Joseph Ryan, Assistant Deputy Chief of Staff, G357. Major General Thomas Tickner, Chief, Le Chief Legislative Liaison. Major General Anthony Hale, Special Assistant to the Director of the Army Staff, Office of the Chief of Staff, Army. Major General Keith Phillips, Director for Operations, Defense Intelligence Agency. Major General Matteo Martimucci, Deputy Chief, Central Security Service. Major General Retired George Franz, former INSCOM CG. Major General Retired Charles Cleveland, former Director of Operations and Military Deputy, National Geospatial Interagency Intelligence Agency. Major General Retired John George, former Commander, Combat Capabilities Development Command. Major General Retired Barbara Fast, 
former Chief of Staff, Training and Doctrine Command. Major General Retired Michael Dunleavy, former Mobilization Assistant to the Director, National Security Agency. Ms. Amanda Rogers Thorpe, National Security Advisor to Senator Peter Welch of Vermont. Mr. Th Mr. Tommy Gwen, Professional Staff Member, Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. Mr. Aaron Thurman, Professional Staff Member, House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Mr. John Bratcher, Director, Operations and Integration, Office of the Deputy Chief of Staff, G2. Mr. Timothy Minor, Chief of Intelligence, <coughs> National Security Agency. Ms. Elizabeth Mallet Harkama, Director, Resources Integration, Office of the Deputy Chief of Staff, G2. Ms. Catherine Yorkman, Yorkanen, Principal Deputy Chief of Legislative Liaison. Ms. Annette Redman, Former Deputy Assistant Secretary, Bureau of Intelligence and Research. Mr. Charles Sardo, Former INSCOM Chief of Staff. Mr. Daryl Lance, Former INSCOM Chief of Staff. Brigadier General Dominique Golay, Chief of Staff, Canadian Forces Intelligence Command. Colonel Joseph Messina, Garrison Commander, Fort Belvoir. Colonel Melissa Adamski, Commander, Military Intelligence Readiness Command. Chief Warrant Officer 5, Kevin Bouton, former Chief Warrant Officer, INSCOM. Mr. Jose Ramos, Wounded Warrior Project. Our foreign military partners from Australia, Canada, Germany, Republic of Korea, and the United Kingdom. Other distinguished guests, INSCOM's command group, INSCOM senior leaders, and all members of the INSCOM family those watching virtually. And a special welcome to Major General Bradenkamp's family, her spouse, Major General Trevor Bradenkamp, her son, Gavin, her daughter, Greer, General Bradenkamp's mother, Mrs. Harmon, and family friend, Mr. and Mrs. Eric Land. We welcome Major, Major General Brown's family, his spouse, Mrs. Inga Brown, his sons, Nicholas, Christopher, and Matthew, mother, Mrs. Ina Claire Brown, and, and mother-in-law, Ms. Carol Vandry, and her husband, Mr. Thomas Curtis. Major General Brown's daughter, Caroline, could not be with us today. Please stand for the arrival of the official party, plan of honors, of which Lieutenant General Potter defers to General Bradenkamp, the national anthem, and remain standing for the invocation given by the INSCOM Command Chaplain, Chaplain Larry Dayback.
Good morning. Feel free to join me as I pray. Almighty God, I am so grateful to you for Major General Michelle Bradenkamp and all that she has accomplished while leading us here at U.S. Army INSCOM. Thank you for her exceptional competence, character, and commitment as she led and cared for all 18,000 of us around your world. And all this, Father, while keeping her priorities straight as a spouse and as a mother. So I also remember to you her wonderful family gathered here today, Lord, for her mother and husband and children, Gavin and Greer. Lord, I pray for your richest blessings for her and her precious family in your great adventure for Team Braden Camp. Lord, I also lift up to you our new commander, Major General Timothy Brown. Grant your abundant blessings upon him and his family here today. I ask that you give him wisdom beyond measure, give him courage beyond compare, and give him the humility needed to lead and to serve this global command. As he accepts this command today, may he be the husband, father, and soldier you have called and enabled him to be. In your almighty name I pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Please be seated. <clears throat> the Color Guard on parade, is, on parade is assigned to Headquarters and Headquarters Company, United States Army Intelligence and Security Command. This, the distinguished unit flags <clears throat> of INSCOM 17 globally dispersed major subordinate commands are posted behind the colors. We are especially honored to have with us the United States Army Brass Quintet, led by Master Sergeant Rick Lee. Please join me in a round of applause for the Color Guard and Kentucky. In lieu of a floral presentation, Major General Bradenkamp will be making a donation to the Wounded Warriors Program. At this time, a bouquet of yellow roses is being presented to Ms. Inga Brown. The yellow roses represent future friendships and a warm welcome to the command. This morning, as we mark the time-honored tradition of the change of command, we celebrate INSCOM's 46th year as the centerpiece of Army intelligence, and we honor the sacrifice and professionalism of INSCOM's 20,000 men and women who today reign, remain on point for our Army in 42 countries and 180 locations around the globe, conducting intelligence operations in support of joint, interagency, intergovernmental, and multinational partners. Throughout the tensions and the events of the Cold War, through provocations, provocations in Europe, on the Korean Peninsula, and in regional conflicts in the Balkans, Asia, Africa, Central and South America, in Iraq and Afghanistan, and in the ongoing global flight fight against skilled and determined terrorist group, groups, INSCOM has been there for our Army and our nation as its intelligence sword and shield protecting our nation's secrets and providing critical intelligence to our soldiers at every echelon and to our combatant commanders. And along the way, INSCOM continues to adopt to meet the demand of new and emerging threats while embracing cutting edge technology to better enable decisive action. Today, as we recognize this change of command, we celebrate INSCOM as the Army's flagship command for intelligence continuing to build on INSCOM's illustrious history, accomplishing today's mission while also preparing our Army's intelligence forces for the mission and challenges of tomorrow. Since the earliest chronicles of military history, military leaders have used a banner or flag as a visible symbol to identify themselves and to serve as a rallying point for their warriors. The very soul of a military unit is symbolized in the colors for which it fights, to record the glories of the past and to stand guard over the present. Traditionally, the command sergeant major is responsible to keep the command, commander, to the commander for the safekeeping of the unit colors. Today, INSCOM's Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Gillum, will pass the colors to General Bradenkamp for the last time. General Bradenkamp then passes the colors to General Potter. 
thereby relinquishing her responsibility and authority. General Potter then passes the colors to General Brown, signifying the transfer of responsibility and authority of command to him. Major General Brown passes the colors to Command Sergeant Major Gillum, entrusting him with the colors to carry on the tradition of and care of soldiers and families across the command. By authority of paragraph 2-5, Army Regulation 600-20, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Army Intelligence and Security Command, Fort Belvoir, Virginia, effective 14 December 2023, signed Timothy D. Brown, Major General, United States Army, commanding. I am honored to present the host and receiving officer for today's ceremony, United States Army Deputy Chief of Staff, G2, Lieutenant General Laura A. Potter. Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody for the turnout here. I had a chance to walk around and shake so many hands. Um, and see just the phenomenal talent of Intelligence and Security Command and the phenomenal support it gets from both its former members and broadly across the Army. So it's, it's great uh, to see everyone. It's such a historic day for the Army Intel and Security Enterprise, the Army, the Joint Force, and the intelligence community. So thank you all for being here. General and Mrs. Nakasone, uh, fellow serving and retired general and flag officers, former INSCOM commanding generals, uh, members of the senior executive service, senior enlisted leaders, our um, excellent supportive congressional staff members that are here, distinguished visitors from across the Intel community and the Army, family and friends, welcome and thank you for joining us for today's ceremony. Today we will acknowledge and celebrate the command's accomplishments Thank Michelle Bradenkamp for her outstanding leadership and welcome Tim Brown back into the INSCOM family. Also, I know many family and friends are watching virtually, uh, so I really appreciate all of you who couldn't be here in person that are joining us online. Uh, before I move on, I want to take this chance to thank the hardworking team uh, here that made this ceremony possible, in particular the uh, excellent color guard that represents our Army so well the Brass Quintet, and the INSCOM staff. So well done to all of you. Please join me in a round of applause. <laughs> so I'd like to begin by thanking Michelle's husband, Major General Trevor Bradenkamp. He's been by her side for so many years, and I won't go through the long history of that, but I'll go through a little bit of the recent history. So when Michelle took command, um, over two years ago, Trevor was serving as our Chief of the Office of Legislative Liaison, a 24-7 demanding task. Somebody always wants something out of our Chief of Legislative Liaison, and Trevor always delivered in a high-pressure job. And went from there to the Commanding General of the U.S. Army Military District of Washington and Commander Joint Force Headquarters, National Capital Region. Together, they, they led uh, two of the most complicated two-star commands in our Army. And Trevor and Michelle, your ability to share the burdens of command, to support each other tirelessly every day, and to balance that with family life is truly incredible. When I describe Trevor and Michelle personally as neighbors of mine down the street, neither one of them ever has an idle moment. It's either meaningful work, meaningful parenting, meaningful outreach, meaningful friendship and you both are really an inspiration for our Army. Um, I'd also like to thank Michelle's mother, Yaiko, who's become a good friend of mine. I said it was the best hug I got in the, in the reception area. Um, and um, their awesome children, uh, Gavin and Greer. And I know your cousin Valerie couldn't be here today, but I know she wishes she could be. And of course, dear family friends, Mr. and Mrs. Eric Land, uh, for being here today. Command is a very challenging and stressful time that I know many of you appreciate, but the, f the love and commitment of the Braden Camp's extended family and the support they gave to Michelle, I know, meant everything to her throughout command. 
So INSCOM was established in 1977 to meet the intelligence needs of the Cold War, and I know most of the people in this room know its history. Um, but at that time, its creation marked the most radical realignment of Army intelligence assets in a generation. And throughout the decades, INSCOM has continuously transformed its people, its systems, and its formations to ensure success of our Army and the Joint Force. The wartime footing INSCOM maintained throughout the global war on terrorism was in fact so impactful and seamless that in some cases it went unnoticed and unrecognized, but it always delivered. Today, INSCOM still maintains that level of dedication to our troops that are in harm's way, while also transitioning to support the global demand called for in our national defense strategy. An era defined by strategic competition that demands active campaigning and integrated deterrence that's underpinned by the global intelligence that INSCOM delivers. When you think of things like our operations in the Pacific for Pacific Pathways, when you think of the campaigning we're doing in Europe and throughout our other combatant commands, INSCOM's underpinning that every day. INSCOM supports the Joint Force, every one of our theater armies, our multi-domain task forces, our cyber, space, and soft forces, and our echelon below, core and below formations. The Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Christine Wormuth, our Chief of Staff, General George, and Sergeant Major of the Army, Weimer, recently laid out their vision in a message to the Army team. That the U.S. Army is a global force that fights when called upon at the scale required to win our nation's wars. And when our Army hits the dirt, America means business. And I know INSCOM takes care of business every day by connecting and delivering critical intelligence across the Army, the Joint Force, and to our, most, our, our nation's most senior decision makers. I'd like to thank um, INSCOM's more than 20,000 soldiers, Army civilians, and contractors that make up um, the Army's operational and strategic intelligence force with the 17 major subordinate commands dispersed, as you've heard, across more than 180 locations worldwide. Your selfless service and groundbreaking work are directly responsible for the protection and security of our soldiers, our nations, and many of our allies and partners. I would also like to thank the INSCOM leadership team, including Command Sergeant Major Gillum, the Command Chief, Chief Warrant Officer, Mr. Sager, Mr. Dave Kim, Mr. Anderson Sale, Colonel Christy Nyland, and the dedicated men and women of the INSCOM headquarters. Michelle, your ability to balance every additional responsibility that comes with being the INSCOM CG was incredible to watch. Your leadership of our enterprise through crisis and conflict enabled INSCOM to project a dynamic intelligence posture that res was responsive to emergent threats and critical events. For example, within days of the onset of the Russia-Ukraine war, INSCOM surged and prioritized critical SIGINT, GEOINT, human intelligence, CI, open source, and all source analysis, and drew on resources from multiple theaters across the globe to support that main effort. That effort was directly in support of U.S. European Command, U.S. Army, Europe, Africa, and now the, the formed Security and Assistance Group Ukraine. That support helped protect the force, it helped enable lethal aid shipments, and it supported commander's requirements at Echelon. INSCOM is at the ready wherever crisis may break out, such as the around-the-clock support to, withdraw, to the withdrawal from Afghanistan, the ongoing overwatch of the Israel-Hamas conflict, potential coups in continents across the globe, and competitive encounter, encounters in the South China Sea. None of that would have been possible without strong collaboration with the U.S. Army Reserve and the National Guard Bureau, enabling multi-component integration. Michelle's decision to strengthen the relationship improved INSCOM's ability to respond to worldwide missions and increase the overall readiness of many of our reserve units through real-world experience while leveraging the reserve component's ability to fill some of our critical gaps across INSCOM's footprint. Michelle's concerted efforts enabled INSCOM to better support operations, including Operation Inherent Resolve, Spartan Shield, Operation Enduring Freedom, Horn of Africa, and Operation Juniper Micron on the African continent. Michelle and the INSCOM team also embraced the Chief of Staff of the Army's concept of continuous transformation. 
Her leadership was critical in national to tactical intelligence co collaboration, integration, and execution as INSCOM balanced readiness and modernization demands to deliver the Intel enterprise. Her keen insights and leadership were critical in analyst and force design updates across multiple intelligence discipline formations. And in particular, she did groundbreaking work in how we are revolutionizing our Army intelligence data platform. Michelle led the transformation of key intelligence formations. The establishment of the first cyber military intelligence group is providing all source multi-intelligence analysis and processing uh, exploitation and dissemination to support U.S. Army Cyber Command. She furthered our Army counterintelligence reforms with the establishment of the first Army counterintelligence command led by Brigadier General Rhett Cox. And Army CI Command has improved the Army's ability to protect our Army against foreign intelligence operations by expanding their operational reach, their flexibility, and empow empowering counterintelligence operations and investigations at the lowest level. A particular note is Michelle's stewardship of the Army's manned aerial ISR enterprise under our modernization strategy. This generational transformation ensured a full divestment of our legacy aircraft while maintaining support to Army Service Component Command and Combatant Command requirements. She has ensured conditions are in place to successfully integrate the future of our aerial ISR fleet um, and that we have a good way ahead for both the unit uh, the men and women of the unit and uh, the equipment. These amazing accomplishments are merely a few of her and her team's many achievements since June of 2021 um, that represent our intelligence commitment to the Army and the nation. INSCOM's achieved innumerable, innumerable operational successes under Michelle's leadership, but it was her people first ethos that I find most commendable. And I'm sure without putting people first, INSCOM wouldn't have enjoyed the successes that I've just talked to you about. She launched a comprehensive initiative to improve the holistic wellness and readiness of INSCOM, known as, known as the Vigilant Wellness Program. This initiative provided INSCOM personnel with access to wellness resources, with assistance and education on stress management, conflict resolution, communication, and other key wellness initiatives. The INSCOM surgeon established the medical readiness section to provide health service support coordination, complex case management consultation, and force health protection subject matter expertise for INSCOM units across the globe. The Vigilant Wellness Program also transformed the effectiveness of the Commander's Ready and Resilient Council, Family Readiness Programs, Mentorship Programs, Sexual Harassment and Assault Response, and Suicide Prevention Programs. Additionally, as part of this campaign, in two years, INSCOM executed over $210 million in operations and maintenance funds for construction and repair projects. These facility repairs helped ensure that soldiers and civilians have purpose-built spaces and functional workplace environments to perform and succeed. This program, championed by Michelle, will have a positive and enduring impact on INSCOM for years to come. Um, so. As I list all of those things, you can just imagine doing all of those things for a global enterprise that 24-7 someone is up doing an intelligence mission or needs something out of that headquarters is quite a daunting task, and the Army is very proud of her. Um, sh they are also very proud, for those of you who may not be aware, that last night Michelle was confirmed by the Senate for her third star and will become the Director's Advisor for Military Affairs to the Honorable Haynes, the Director of National Intelligence. Please join me in a moment. Uh, with Michelle's departure, uh, we are sad to see her go, but we are fortunate to welcome Major General Tim Brown back to INSCOM. I'd also like to welcome Tim's wife, Miss Inga Brown, their sons, Nicholas, Christopher, and Matthew, his mother, Miss Ina um, Claire Brown, and Inga's mother, Miss Carol Vandry, and her stepfather, Mr. Tom Curtis. Thank you all so much for joining us today and supporting Tim uh, for his career up to date and getting ready to support him in this very challenging global mission that he has just taken responsibility for. Tim joins the command with a keen understanding and appreciation for INSCOM's mission, 
having served in several INSCOM positions to include commanding the 1st Military Intelligence Battalion. And more recently, he served as distinction as the Executive Officer to the Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence as the J and as the J-2 for both Southern Command and U.S. European Command. Tim is a transformational Army leader of competence and character with incredible operational and joint experience, and I know he's the right leader as we move out on the Chief of Staff of the Army's priorities. So Tim, welcome back to INSCOM. Our Intel Enterprise is in your hands, and I know you will lead it very well with the awesome INSCOM team that supports you. Thank you all so much for being here this morning. God, God bless all of you, INSCOM, the Army, and the United States of America. Always out front, Army strong, this will defend. I'm honored to present the former INSCOM Commanding General, Major General Michelle H. Bradenkamp. I think I'm a little shorter than you, ma'am. This mic's coming down a little bit, so um, that just resonated with me, right? Former INSCOM Commander. So, so, so first of all, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests families, friends, and really especially to the soldiers and the civilians of INSCOM. I see you all out there. We have a large population over here from our INSCOM team, so, so welcome. Um, if you were here when I first took command, I think it was 9,000 degrees outside. And so um, with a lot of really good counsel and advice, thank you very much, Command Sergeant Major, right? Instead of keeping us out in the 30 degree weather, we decided to bring it in. So everybody relax, right? Sip your water. And I have 50 pages to go through, just kidding. I just got a couple of comments here. So it's great really to see so many teammates and friends in the audience. Um, I see so many familiar faces and it's just wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you appreciate you making the time to be here with us. We all understand the demands for your time, especially during the holiday season. I very much believe that where you invest your time highlights what is important to you. So I wanna personally say thank you for being here. First, I would like to recognize all who helped organize and execute today's events. Ms. Kent and our protocol team, the Army Quintet, and yes, we have the MDW commander in the audience there with the Army band, our color guard, and our, our INSCOM staff. It's a heavy lift. Thank you. It's a heavy lift to make these events so special, and you have absolutely done that, so thank you. So leading up to today, I had the opportunity to reflect not only on the last 30 months in command, but also on my 30 years of service in uniform. And I'm mindful of everyone who's invested in me throughout the years, especially over the past two and a half years. And I wanna thank you all, especially to my mentors and to the former INSCOM CGs who've provided me really with sound counsel, with perspective, and also support. But there are a few that I would like to specifically call out. Um, first to, to General Nakasone and Mrs. Nakasone, Susan. Thank you very much. I know Colonel Alsup is not here, uh, but thank you, Chuck. Um, hopefully you're uh, piping in uh, virtually. And then also to uh, Lieutenant General Retired Donahue. Um, all of you, I truly, truly appreciate your mentorship and your investment in me over the past three decades and really throughout my time here in command, especially during some of the most challenging times that we faced um, and we really needed you. And to Lieutenant General Laura Potter, ma'am, thank you very much for what you do for our intelligence enterprise and for our Army. You are an amazing leader and an amazing person. And I hope you know how much you do for so many and how much we appreciate you. Positive leadership from the top makes all the difference in the world. So thank you. To my peers and my friends in the audience, I see your faces out there. I will not go through the eaches, but I say thank you. 
I do want to give a special shout out to Eric and Tracy Land who do so much for Team Braden Camp. Thanks for always being there, always supporting, always driving out when we need you. Um, you mean more to us than you know. So to all our, our friends and peers, appreciate your unending support, your friendship, and oftentimes just lending an ear. You've always delivered, and Trevor and I are extremely grateful, so thank you. To my family, my husband Trevor, you're the rock Trevor, our children, Gavin and Greer, they're embarrassed because I called their names out. <laughs> and of course, to my mom. And I do want to share, my mother was supposed to be on a trip out in the Caribbean right now, and she actually changed her travel plans just to be here for, for me. And, and so, right, the, the price that parents pay for their children, right? Mom, thank you so much, and thanks for being my number one role model throughout my life. <laughs> you are all the best. I appreciate you being so patient with me over the last two and a half years as I really put my heart and soul into this command and the people here. You guys are my inspiration, you're my purpose, and I'm so proud of each of you. I love you. Okay, so as the commander of INSCOM, I've been surrounded by some very, very exceptional people. I'd like to recognize my squad, my squad, and those that I've been working closely with, particularly in the command group. Command Sergeants Majors Kyle Gillum and Will Reinhardt, thank you so much for being my battle buddy and really keeping me straight and giving me very, very sound counsel. To our Command Chief Warrant Officers, CW5 Jonathan Irby and Jeremy Sager, thank you. You guys are absolutely the experts and I couldn't do it without you. Our DCOs. Colonel Christy Nyland and Colonel Mike Dundashaw. Mike, I see you out there. Thank you. I can't say enough. To our Chiefs of Staff, Mr. John Bradshaw. John, I see you right there. As well as Mr. Carl Neal. Herding the cats, driving the staff. It's extremely tough in a global command with 20,000 people, but you've done it extremely well. To our Director of Support and the Director of Operations, Mr. Dave Kim and Mr. Anderson Sale. You guys are the glue. You're the continuity. You make so much happen for so many people. Thank you. To our G DCGs, just as General Potter alluded to, our superstar Compo 3 general officers that make the teamwork and pull us all together using the diversity of the force that we have to get things done and get after the mission. General Pete Whalen and Colonel Carlos Caceres, amazing. My drivers, Staff Sergeant Phillips and Staff Sergeant uh, Sibley, I know you guys are out there. Our executive assistants, Ms. Brandy Matthews and Mr. R Rudy Harrell. Rudy, go Army beat Navy. Had to, had to throw that one out there. To the, to the XOs, who are the orchestrators and the masterminds behind many of the things that we've done, especially in the command group, Lieutenant Colonels Adam Sperry, Matt Shirley, Mark Awad, and Jason Quash. Thank you. And to our ADCs, the aide de camps, you guys are amazing, motivating me, doing PT with me, right? Having fun. Captains Calvin Lewis. Calvin, you're now a major. Where are you? Major Lewis. <laughs> I didn't demote you, man. <laughs> uh, Joe Williams and Julie Brooks, you guys are amazing. And I'd like to give a shout out to our hardworking headquarters staff directors and our brigade commanders and our command sergeants majors out there leading 17 of our major subordinate commands worldwide. You are all tremendous. I'm fully confident we're in great hands as you continue to lead our armory formations into the future. And to our partners, our coalition partners here in the audience, in MDW here at Fort Belvoir Garrison, at Eisenhower, at Meade, and other locations around the world, and especially to the DAMI staff. We appreciate your support and all that you do for our command. It's not lost on us, and we know it's not always easy, so thank you. So finally, I'd like to provide a heartfelt welcome, or thank you, excuse me, to all members 
of our INSCOM team. Thank you for what you do each and every day. Each soldier, civilian, contractor, and family member across our Global Intelligence Command. You are all very, very special to me. And what you do often goes unnoticed or the details cannot be acknowledged publicly. But your dedication and your sacrifice to the mission and to each other is not lost on me. Our army and our nation depend on you. As we compete and engage with our adversary every day and we respond to crisis and remain ready for conflict, you are always there getting after the mission. Lieutenant General Potter highlighted a number of the collective accomplishments that we've made over the past two and a half years. So I will fo forego that part of my speech. I know everybody's very, very happy with that part, right? I'll keep moving here. So I cut out a number of pages to this, but I do want to acknowledge the incredible contributions that we have made together to do so much for so many organizations across the Army, the Joint Community, and for the interagency and our combat support agencies out there. It takes all of us to do this. Many of you heard me say the Army is a team sport, and what we do here at INSCOM is a team sport. And all of you have played an integral role in our command success over the past two and a half years. I just want you to know how proud I am to have served with you, leading this amazing command and working with such incredible professionals. The INSCOM mission will continue under the leadership of a fantastic officer, Major General Tim Brown. Tim is an incredible leader with fantastic reputation and credibility. And Tim, you are exactly the right person to lead INSCOM into the future. Tim and Inga, congratulations. I look forward to your continued partnership and your friendship. The INSCOM team is ready to continue the mission under your leadership. And I look forward to seeing all the command continue to, continues to do to achieve success. Best of luck. Thank you all again for attending today's ceremony. And to our INSCOM family, thank you for what you have done for me. I am going to miss you. Vigilance always. Be all you can be. This will defend. Thank you. I'm honored to present the INSCOM's Commanding General, Major General Timothy D. Brown. Thank you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, general officers, senior executives, command chiefs, senior enlisted leaders, friends, family members, thanks for showing up. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for your support. Inga and I look forward to meeting with each of you when we go through the reception, uh, but having you here now is absolutely fantastic. I know that I have three main tasks today. One, to be brief. Two, as the incoming commander. Uh, number two, uh, to be thankful. And number three, to notify the team that all policies and procedures will remain in effect. <laughs> Otherwise, the lawyers will come and get me. Uh, starting with the color guard, you look fantastic. Um, Sir Major Gilliam, well done. To the U.S. Army Band Quintet, you honor us today. You honor the nation. Uh, you are absolutely fantastic. It's, it's how good you are at what you do, uh, and then the specialness that you bring to each of our occasions. Thank you. To each of the staff members that, put to, that work so hard to put together this ceremony and execute it all the way through, thank you. General Nakasone, seeing you here today reminds me of um, something as a senior intel officer within the department uh, that General Milley, as, as the chairman, uh, said on more than one occasion um, when he was really providing an indictment on the performance of the intel community uh, support that he received as the chairman. And he, he simply said, this is a quote, uh, best intelligence in the history of warfare. Uh, to each of the senior leaders and intel professionals that made that happen, 
um, my, my hat's off to you. Uh, but I also want to acknowledge part of the magic, maybe the real magic, in what we do in our Intel business is with our allies and partners. And I want to give a special call out uh, to our distinguished visitors that, that came today from all the way from Australia and Canada, Republic of Korea, United Kingdom, France, Germany. Um, we couldn't do what we do without you. So thanks for your, your teamwork, your partnership. General Potter, um, thank you so much for your, your, your mentorship, your coaching, uh, your assignments. You, you, you sent me off into the joint force. Uh, while I was out screwing around in, in uh, Latin America and Europe, um, you were leading the largest, most consequential Army intelligence and security enterprise transformation, potentially in history. And I, I can't tell you how exciting it is uh, to be an Army Intel soldier and to come back into one of your formations to help you execute this transformational vision. Never been more important, and I'm proud to be on your team. General Braden Camp, <coughs> Michelle, my friend, um, you have given me a phenomenal transition. One, to make sure that we, I don't screw things up in the command, but uh, two, uh, because you are an incredible teammate. Thank you <coughs> for the welcome, for the friendship. Um, everything that you have done here at INSCOM is truly world class. From rebuilding the team coming out of COVID to instilling <coughs> discipline and rigor into, <coughs> let me grab my water. <clears throat> the fighting force and, and also the staff processes. Um, what you have done over the last two and a half years is truly fantastic. To, our ins to my INSCOM uh, teammates, <clears throat> it's great to be back home with you, America's finest. Truly a team of teams, a team of professionals. What you do for the nation with your talent, your commitment, your devotion, your expertise is unmatched in so many ways and truly unique. And they are part of the crown jewels for the nation and our national security. Lastly, to each of our family members, <coughs> thanks for your incredible support. You're the glue that holds us together. As Army families, you are like our lifeblood uh, for an organization. Trevor, Gavin, Greer, and your extended family, uh, thanks for being an, an incredible husband and incredibly supportive family uh, to your mom. And your service has made a difference. Your support has made a difference for INSCOM. And I'm gracious. Uh, uh, I, I just want to thank you for that. And then to my own family, uh, Inga and Caroline, who's not here, Nick, Chris, Matt, parents, extended family online. Uh, thank you for staying on this journey. Thank you for your love and support in this great Army adventure. All right, let's get after it. Vigilance always, this will defend. The INSCOMF March was written in 1984 by the director of United States Army Band, Hershing's own, exclusively, exclusively for and to honor the soldiers and civilians of INSCOM for their dedication, professionalism, and their unrelenting relenting persistence in the conduct of intelligence operations and support to intelligence operations for our Army and nation around the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and remain standing for the playing of the INSCOM march, the Army song, retiring of the colors, and the departure of the official party.
thank you for attending the ceremony. Please give us a moment as we reset the stage for the receiving line with General Bradenkamp and General Brown. The receiving line will, be, will begin to the left of the stage, my right. Everyone is also invited.